Hello, this is Robocop, and I'm going to be showing you this M Classic HDMI external graphics card dongle. Now, I've been looking at video reviews that this has been used for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, as well as the Nintendo Switch. So I'm not going to be using these sort of things, but what I'm going to be using is the Virtual Pi from my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus which is inside here which is the Nest Pi case plus for the Raspberry Pi 3 Pre Plus now the question is how am I able to record it and give you the exact enhancement of this video graphics card like this well what I have here is this Elgato Game Catcher HD card and the reason why I'm using this is because this allows component video to be supported because these sorts of cables were commonly found well mostly the composite cable with the yellow and red and green uh, red and white audio RCA cables and this is component but for the moment I'm not going to be worried too much about this for this one so what you do first is this M Classic has to plug in directly to the console, like this. And then you use this USB to plug in and to give a bit of power in order for the, the dongle to work. And then you plug in the, this thing in here. Now, while this is getting re-rendered and enhanced, this will travel over to this thing here. So what you do is connect it to the game catcher device and hopefully that will record the enhanced video quality to make the anti nielsen take an effect so you can see as I'm going to record it into this thing here. So I do legally own quite a lot of these Game Boy games from Nintendo as well as the Game Boy Advance games and to tell the truth I've also got a huge bundle of DS and 3DS games and all these sort of things here and let's of course not forget the DSi itself because you need it to load and I've also got the 3DS but I'm not going to worry too much because the problem is this Retro Pi for the Pi 3B is not powerful enough to work with DS games and the Dolphin which is the GameCube emulator doesn't work because this is an ARM based architecture uh, Pi and the Dolphin only works on the Intel 8, x86 so therefore this will not be useful to be to the GameCube games that you've ripped. Now of course I do legally own the GameCube games but I'm not going to go too much so without further ado let's take this retro pie plug into the M Classic and make sure this is recording properly and put this into action so let's go on to the next bit. Well here we are this is my Nintendo Switch Online for the NES and here are the games I've got. So I'm going to focus on Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels. Now this is M Classic switched on at 1080p mode. Now you may have noticed that it doesn't seem to be affected or nothing as enhanced, hasn't it? Well there's a reason why. So when I switch the M Classic dongle off just after Mario dies with that poison mushroom, which is right now, Again, nothing happened, and you can't see any significant differences even when you switch the M Classic off. Well, there's a reason for it. If I go to the system settings for a minute, just quit this, and go to 480p mode, if I can get down yet, there we go. And you'll see why I set this resolution to 1080p mode. So this is the M Classic 
switched off when I go back to Super Mario Lost Levels intro, the attraction screen. Looks the same as the previous previews that I've shown you. Now, when I switch the M Classic on, wait for it, there you have it. But notice the flashing too from the Super Mario Bros. title block. It doesn't seem to be smoothed out or using the anti aneosin properly. But for the rest of the sprites and displays, it seems to work fine. There you have it, and that's the result of that. Okay, now to the Raspberry Pi, which I'm going to load right now, as you can see, which is running on my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus using the RetroPie standalone distro. And there's the emulation station. Now, what I have is around about a selection of games, including the Game Boy and Amiga and ZX Spectrum and that. So the thing is about the Amiga, it does have a selectable uh, amounts of selectable resolutions. By far the most common one would be 640 by 256 as you can see from the emulation station which is highlighting the Amiga. Now I'm going to pick Adam's family and I'm going to explain a bit further about how to play these things with the M Classic as well as reconfiguring the display for this thing. So this is the Amiga Amoeba Berry which is the Raspberry Pi compatible version for the Amiga and this is actually running at 576p which is PAL progressive mode uh, which is different because the only problem is it doesn't work with interlaced mode that gives you the common effect and also that but that doesn't work with the M Classic so this is Adam's family and as you can see the boring introduction and and the problem with the Amiga, it takes a long while to load because they use floppy disks instead of the ROM cartridges. So, anyway, this is the M Classic switched off. I'm not using any renderers or upscalers for this one, just like I did from the Nintendo Switch Online for the NES. So, this is M Classic off. Now, watch what happens when I switch it on. In 3, 2, one and there you have it there you go you notice that the heart and the zeros the numbers are smoothed down a bit that indicates that it works quite all right with 16-bit computers or consoles yeah so as you can see this is actually set to 640 by 256 and there's a reason why which I'm going to explain later on because most Amigas don't run at like VGA mode. Well, of course, because it's a 16 bit console and it works around about 320 by 200. But for PAL games that uses extra vertical pixels, it's at 640 by uh, 512. That's its maximum, but commonly 640 by 256. And if I just increase the speed of the floppy just to skip the warning shows or the load ups anyway, if I go to display, watch what happens when I set to 640 by 240, which is what the NTSCs usually have, but it's more, more like. 640 by 200 especially for this DOS screen, the Amiga DOS screen watch what happens if I set it to 640 by 248 you'll notice that this number here is missing the bottom part so therefore if I go back to the height to 256 oh, there we go that should hopefully see the full figure of the number 5 from the scrolling message and as you can see there's no scaling message uh, methods that are altering the 
the dots, not even the Super Eagle or HQ4X. So this is M Classic off. Now you have to forgive me for this YouTube video because this is making the frame rates go at 25 or 480 frames instead of 50 or 60. So you have to forgive me for that. Watch the flagpole and see what happens when I put M Classic on. Ready? Watch carefully on the flagpole. Now this is actually in re retro mode because that compresses it to a 4 frame ratio. But if I switch it to progressive mode, which is the green button here, and yes, you can see the flag pole has smoothened and using the anti aliasing effect. So as you can see, it works quite good. So there you have it. Even though the Amiga and setting the resolution is complicated, that's the way it works, I'm afraid. So there you go. So that's the results for the Amiga. But what about the consoles, as well as the very early 8-bit consoles, which is this thing here, the Atari 2600? Now, the thing is, these sort of very old 8-bit consoles don't really work at running at half the VGA mode, which is around about 320 by 240 because for this Atari 20, uh, 2600, it's actually around about uh, 16 by 240 which makes it stretched out to it the pictures stretch out horizontally now nah, there you go and this is actually using no shaders so the reason why I'm going to be selecting the shaders. This actually works better if you put the shaders like XBR for the retro flag for the uh, retro arch for the retro pipe. And you notice these little dots, these little pellets seem to be smoothened. And watch what happens when I switch the M Classic off. You don't notice much difference, do you? Now this sort of colour tint that blend uh, with the blue and rail, you notice that the edges have sharpened and it looks very blunt, whereas the footer of the Atari has smoothened, as you probably noticed already. So the next thing we're going to go to is the Game Boy, and this is Super Mario Land 261 coins. This is N Classic on already. And again, I'm going to be using the shaders. And that actually helps make the M Classic along with the XBR shader work together, makes the quality look good because the problem is with the Game Boy is that it uses a very low pixel around about 160 by 140 pixels, which is very small and it's square shaped. That's why you get the black space, which is wider than the 430 ratios. So next up is Micro Machines for the Mega Drive or Genesis as you call it in North America which is at two uh, it's 320 by 224 224 instead of 240 and as you can see the Born Intro and this is M Classic on. And as you can see from the Retro Arch uh, GUI menu, you notice that the font is smoothing out a bit. So, watch what happens when I select a shader which is XBR, which is probably recommended for the 16 bit sprites and 16 bit computers and consoles. Watch what happens when I apply it and reset the and go to the born intro and watch the supersonic logo and the font as I reset it. Yeah, it looks smoother now, doesn't it? So yeah, you're probably best off using the XBR 
which is something that you do not get with the virtual console for the Wii and also for the Nintendo Switch Online for the NES games that you subscribed. So therefore you're probably better off using this Retro Pi along with the Retro Archers XBR GL fillers, uh, shaders and that, which gives you the best results. So there you have it. That's the M Classic HDMI dongle and it works quite alright with the Retro Pi here and this Elgato uh, recorder works quite well to this PC here and as you can see this is the the Mega Drive game that I recently played the Micro Machines game just to give you a demonstration and showing you with XBR on along along with the M Classic switched on and this blue button here that's retro mode and if I switch it to the green mode that's processing mode and it takes a while for this monitor to adjust to this new setting here and the blue one that goes into 4-3 ratio which is one of these old school TVs that didn't have widescreen TVs until around about 99 or so even though we're very expensive to buy for a cheap CRT TV so my opinion about this well to be honest it's not exactly perfect, but it does work very well, only if you have it around a minimum of 480p, but not 480i, because it doesn't work that way. And for 4K games, that's not going to work, so I'm afraid you have to... Sorry for destroying your hopes or bursting your bubble, because the M Classic won't work at 240p. Especially if you're trying to use the conversion stripe, like the RCA composite videos to convert it to uh, HDMI. These sort of ordinary converters will not work. Of course, you can get the retro uh, tank, uh, retro tank, or even the frame meister, or even the open source converter. And these sort of things do work, but that's kind of like cheating because... I had to use the Virtual Pi to see what it's like without the sort of upscalers and that just to give you the native video picture which I've done right here on this computer. So anyway, now I'm very sorry that I'm not showing you the Retro, flag, uh, retro Pi. The reason why I got Retro Flag because this Nest Pi is a, made by the Retro Flag. And it has these cool resets and on and off switches, which is programmed to the GPA IO components. So anyway, so if you're hoping for me to play like this here, which is my Wii games, which is quite a good bundle. And of course the Wii games that I use with the Wii remote and the, and the Wii zapper. And this is the disc cleaning thing to keep the DVD. Uh, DVD, what I send the Wii clean, in case it gets spunged up with dust. And of course you get the GameCube ports with the memory memory card and the ports. That's one of the things I legally own as well. This is actually the actual uh, uh, micro machines that I legally own. And I've still got the cartridge, which is quite surprising. And uh, so yeah. Double dash, one channel. Quite a lot of these games that I legally own, which proves that I legally entitled to play and these GameCube games, but for Game Boy games and all these sort of things, you cannot download them from the emulator sites and you're not legally entitled to share the ROMs online, so there you have it. So that's my review and very sorry to disappoint you with the results that you hoped for and you have to forgive me for not playing for the GameCube games but I think some of the other YouTube videos have already done a review for these sort of games already like using the Wii and plugging into the GameCube controllers that you can with your Switch so anyway that's it for today hope you enjoyed this video and please check my website and Discord and I'll see you then, goodbye